Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the first bonus video of the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tonight we're not, well, we're dyeing some mini skeins, but tonight we're going to be dyeing full skeins of yarn, specifically a very luxurious merino yak silk blend that I adore. Door. This yarn base is such a joy to knit with that when I was using it in the past and it was time to change to a different yarn base, I really didn't want to stop knitting with it. I loved the way it felt, loved the way it worked up. And when I realized I could use this base myself and dye it myself, I got so excited. Now, before I go and show you this awesome yarn base and tell you a little bit more about it, please make sure you're subscribed and turn your notifications on. Give the video a thumbs up and all the other YouTube-y things. It's the biggest way you can help support the content here. I absolutely adore this yarn base and I'm so excited to dye it. This yarn is 60% superwash merino wool, 20% silk, 20% yak. I have dyed the Yak Silk DK base once before. I dip dyed and then did some countertop speckles. And in that video, I found that the speckles that I mixed with citric acid did not show up very well. To be fair, those speckles were a black mixture and this yarn is already very, very grayish brown. And so if they spread a little bit and were a bit more gray, it would have been really, really subtle on here. So we're gonna do our speckly colorway using straight dye powder. I don't remember how long I pre-soaked the yarn the first time I dyed it, but for the first prototypes of this colorway, I decided to pre-soak the yarn into some plain tap water overnight. I added on removable nylon zip ties to 10 skeins, and we also have some bundles of 20 gram mini skeins of Wool to Die Force Platinum Sock in there to use as yarn mops. Those 20 gram minis are Wool to Die Force Platinum Sock or Platinum DK, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's the next morning, things are looking nice and saturated, and before I go and add acid to this so that way we can do our countertop speckles, I need to go figure out the colors that I want to use. I have a range of colors that I'm considering to play with today. We've got the colors I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use, and then I feel like I want one of these to play in with the rest, maybe two. But since I'm a little indecisive about this, I think that we should probably cribbly swatch these colors onto one of our yarn mops before proceeding with dyeing our prototype. To start adding acid to our yarn, I'm gonna put the mops and the first skein we're gonna dye into this bath of 16 cups of water with five tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm just gonna let this soak for a couple of minutes. Uh, the yarn should soak up the acid pretty quickly. And then I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can swatch out our colors. I have a ton of videos where I've done crude swatches of a lot of the dyes in my collection, including blues, pinks, and purples. But sometimes when I'm debating the colors I want to use, it can be helpful to just take another look real time. And since I'm dyeing yarn mops for the Hanukkah samplers anyway, it's a win-win-win. I'll have something unique and fun that I can wrap up and pack in the samplers. And uh, this will help me narrow down what colors I use so I can get a little bit of contrast. But I should keep in mind that the colors that I'm adding on this white bearskin of yarn are gonna look different once we dye the yak. And the colors that we dye in the yak are gonna look pretty different when wet than when dry because that yarn looks significantly darker when it is wet. Of all these colors, the one that I don't think we have a true sense of yet is the hyacinth. And actually, I think I might wanna just pour a little bit of warm water on it or hot water on it. The hyacinth is sometimes a color that disappears a little bit until it has some heat. Um, and so there we go. I'm now seeing the more blue. It's a little more pastel. I figure we may as well give a little bit of water to some of these other colors to just see a little bit of how they may spread. Okay, pink orchid is one that I know. Uh, because we want to make sure that the colors sort of show up and pop on our yarn. 
The aubergine in person does look purple. On camera, it might be looking pretty black. I don't mind that that's looking black. I think that even with like a gray sort of layer over all of this, I think that these colors will still be distinct. I debated uh, right here as I'm standing leaving out the hyacinth, but I do love it and it is way more blue than electric violet and it is different from the indigo as well. It's less pigmented. I think we're going to leave it in. And the, oof, but then what other color do we want? Because our main colors on the gray are going to be fairly neutral. They aren't going to explode off of the yarn. These colors here could explode a little bit. All right, I think I'm gonna go with both Frozen and Spearmint Breeze. And the reason why I'm picking both of these colors is because Spearmint Breeze is a color that I've been using a lot lately. I feel like, well, have I been using the Spearmint or Bright Aqua over Hanukkah? I forget, one of them. But the Spearmint Breeze kind of represents the new color I reach for over and over again. And Frozen Blue, in past years was a color that I used over and over again for Hanukkah. And so both of these will be brighter even on the yak base and sort of interplay with the other colors and some of the natural bare yarn beautifully. Now as for these yarn mops, I'm gonna go steam it for a little bit because we did put a lot of dye on here. But before we do that, I thought it would be fun to come in and just uh, squish it a little bit. See, see what we got, see what's happening. Spread these colors more. We do have five minis here. Ooh, maybe actually we will not be adding more color to this one. Maybe this is gonna be a complete uh, set. This is really pretty. I love the watercolor-ness of it. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna go steam set this for 30 minutes. And then this pains me a little bit because there's a tiny bit of dye in here, but I'm going to go rinse this out uh, before we set up and add new yarn mops to it. We're going to prototype just on one skein at first. And unfortunately, we probably will not have a chance to let it dry before we go on and see what's happening with the other colors. But what I will be able to know is Ooh, do I not like the way, at least out of the steamer basket, do I not like the way that green is popping or other colors are popping or maybe we don't need the aubergine or hyacinth. That kind of thing we'll see if we can feel. But I'm going to go put on my respirator mask again so we can start dyeing this. The nice thing about the yarn that we're dyeing right here is that it's DK weight. Therefore, there's not quite as much surface area as there is in other... Uh, types of colorways and I don't mind today if we end up uh, with excess like white quote white area bare area the original color uh, that's something that's fine to me okay and I do want to make sure my fingers are nice and dry before I go into the next color I'm starting with our more subtle colors before we come in with the frozen in the spearmint breeze. And I think my plan is to take these colors and not necessarily going in straight lines. The yarn is scrunched, but I don't want things to be repeating. Uh, but I'm trying to do, I think at least on this first slide, two passes of each of the main colors. Okay, let me go blue, we'll do there. The thing is like, it's hard to see the dye. And some places it might be very much on top of each other and some places it may not. But the colors will also a little bit touch and spread when it goes into the pan as well. Oof. The indigo color is a color I need to use a lot more often. I think hyacinth is another color that has been making a lot of appearances lately. And again, it's okay if these colors are layering on top of each other. We do have a fair amount of dye on the counter, which we will wipe up. Okay, but now we're going to go in with our brights. And we're going to be 
a little bit subtle. And I'm just doing one pass with the green. And who knows, maybe I'll wish that we did more. And then I'm gonna do one pass with our frozen blue, which is a bright blue. And we'll do a dot down there. Okay, and now with my hands relatively dried off, I need to flip the yarn so we can dye the other side. And there is dye on the counter. I don't want to rub things, but I am going to attempt to spread things out nicely. So now we can dye this side. But actually, before we do that, I may as well wipe up a little bit of the stuff on the counter. One of the things I'm really feeling today is a concern in the juxtaposition between am I using enough color, like too much color or too much color? And that is always a concern when you are smuggling. Uh, gosh, it was the first Hanukkah sampler where I made like a mega oops and I used way too much dye, like an absurd amount of dye and really, really regretted it. Not because like it in and of itself was like a super bad thing, but uh, I regretted having, I mean, it was a ton of color and it was gonna bleed and it wasn't what I was going for. So we'll see. I feel like I'm adding a lot of dye, but also not adding a lot of dye. So if I feel like I'm adding too much color and if this bleeds when we wash it, because we're definitely going to want to wash it uh, to see how things are going. If it bleeds a lot, then we'll know that I need to use a lot less dye. But again, we will see. I know that visually right now, I think it's hard to see uh, these different colors. But I do like the combination that we're getting here. And I don't remember which side I had the Spearmint Breeze in the last time. And honestly, that doesn't entirely matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if the colors are well spaced out or on the same side. Uh, there will be variations from skein to skein. Maybe not as much as the time I did that celebration colorway, but I'm expecting these speckles to be on the, the bigger side overall. Okay, this one I went a little zigzag with the frozen. But now I want to go steam set this because I want to be able to see what these colors are gonna do. If I zoom in now, you can see differences in some of these colors. Uh, it's not all gonna look one color. A lot of these colors are bright and pigmented enough. They will show through more once the colors have set. Uh, if you look back at the time I did deeper colors and neon speckles on a very similar base, uh, you could see the difference between all the deep colors. Okay, but now I'm going to carefully take our yarn mop, put it inside a steamer basket, and steam set this for 30 minutes. And as for our mess here, We'll start cleaning this up for our yarn mops. And this one, I think I'll still add more color to it eventually. We will steam set it for just a couple of minutes after I've taken the, the yak blend out. But now, because you can see I'm starting to spread color around from the mop. So I'm going to want to set it before I add more color on top. And I'm going to wipe this down before we go and do another color way. It's been... 30 minutes, ooh, ooh, this is cool. All right, I'm gonna take this out. Ooh, I like the green. It's looking deeper than I expected. But okay, I'm gonna take this out and set it aside so it can cool. But down here towards the bottom, we actually have our other skein. And okay, I am noticing some pink going in to the bottom. I'm gonna get another container to put this in. I'm gonna set these yarn mops side to cool. There is a little bit of color down here just because the dyes sort of dripped down from that mop. The heat in here is off currently. 
But in addition to this little bit of dye that we have down here, we have some dye that I took off of the bottom of the toothpicks from when we were originally dyeing the yarn mop. And I am just going to start bringing this down, adding this in. There's a lot of pinks. There really isn't a lot of acid in here. I didn't add any acid to it, but we may have had some drip down from that other mop. So there might be a little bit. But now we have a little bit more dimension in this yarn, and I'm going to go rinse this some more. Not a lot of color, just a little bit. But I think I will keep this mop on hand because we might have some more color that we want to add over time. Uh, I'm not going to leave this in here the entire time. The dye bath is warm. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to heat it long enough to heat set yet. Uh, but, you know, we'll soak up this color for a couple of minutes, then I'll set it aside, and we'll bring it back as needed. Let's talk about this colorway I just removed. There was a brief moment when I was like, oh no, because I wasn't seeing a lot of color, but I see like our purple and the brighter blue and the brighter green sort of randomly placed. We do have large speckles, but it is speckly. Uh, I really, really like it. I'm very curious to see what it'll look like dried, uh, but before we go and dye the rest, I'm going to let this finish cooling so we can wash it, and then we'll put it through the spin dryer, which won't make it look as light as it does when the yarn is dry. For comparison's sake, this is what the background color looks like when it is dry, so those colors on there will have a bit more contrast, will look a bit brighter uh, once it is dry, uh, because a lot of that color is just what this looks like when wet. So out of the spin dryer, I don't think it'll be this level yet, but we'll get more of a feel of those colors that we put in. And I do feel, I mean, I don't know if it's the indigo and if that's the violet, you know, which ones are which, but I do see, you know, differences between probably the aubergine, the electric violet, uh, and things in there, and I'm enjoying that depth. Let's wash our pretty speckly yarn. I'm really, really excited to see what this looks like dry. It makes it a little bit of a mystery. And then, you know, we'll decide in the end whether or not I really should have used as many colors as I did, or if we could have used fewer and still been fine. All right, I am seeing, oh, interesting. I am seeing some bleeding which may not be a big deal because since we added the dry powders on top and then steamed, it's possible that there is some dye that didn't dissolve. But since we're gonna be dyeing so many of these, this is something that we will want to be checking for. The question is, which color is it? <laughs> That's the question. Um, all right, I'm gonna add a little bit of some dish soap and we are gonna fill this up. But hopefully, hopefully that first rinse took care of whatever was happening. All right, let's see. Oh, perfect. Okay, we saw blue coming out and now maybe there is a tiny hint of something, but it is definitely less color and more maybe just a shadow than what we had before. So I'm now going to rinse out the soap. All right, let's see. All right, I am not seeing anything in here anymore, which is great. So now I'm gonna go put this through my spin dryer. Ooh. The yarn was in the spin dryer for a while and certainly you see the green. Uh, the frozen is still, is actually looking a bit deeper than I expected, but it's still visible. You see like the different purples and deep blues. The colors have a lot of dimension and I think I'm gonna continue using all of them because I like this a lot. Now it's time for me to ramp up the speckling journey here because I've dyed one skein so far and I need a lot more than one. I added 300 grams of the Yak Silk DK into our water with vinegar 
and then spread it out onto our countertop to start speckling. Using a similar pattern as before, where I do on each side about two passes of the Aubergine Electric Violet Indigo Blue and Hyacinth, and then one pass each of the Frozen Blue and Spearmint Breeze before flipping and doing all this all over again. I liked those proportions of colors and I felt like it still left us with a good amount of the natural color of the yarn showing through. I did wipe my fingertips in between each color onto the yarn mop that I had steam set for about 10-15 minutes to make it so it could help soak up more color. And then when I was finished with my speckly yak colorways, I went to go steam these for 30 minutes in my steamer basket. And the yarn mop I will also steam now because I think it has enough color on it and I'm just going to steam it in a separate basket so that way it's not touching physically the speckled skeins so we don't get color transfer between them. And then it's a rinse repeat type situation. Wipe down the counter, add more yarn, and continue. The first 10 skeins of yarn that I was dyeing today had a lot more time to pre-soak than the rest of the yarn that I'll be dyeing, which will have a shorter soak. But since we have some of the natural bare yarn color showing through, a shorter pre-soak isn't going to cause a problem or really even a significant difference in what we see. What will cause a significant difference in what we see is if I start adding some dye on a little bit heavier. Here is our prototype skein of speckled yarn. And I kept this one a little bit separate because I do think that there are some differences between this and some of the others. And mainly it comes down to the fineness of the speckles. Here's one skein I did later on that uh, shows how in some cases I maybe went a little bit heavy with some of the powder. Um, so we've got some more splotch and less fine speckles. Uh, but this also may have happened not just from um, me dying longer and so things changing in that way. It also may have come up because the prototype I I steamed by itself in a steamer basket and then washed. When I was dying multiple skeins I used a bigger steamer basket and I layered in more and more yarn. And so there was a chance that maybe some yarn towards the bottom got more liquid from the steam down below and it allowed the dyes to spread out a little bit more before they set. But I think that the biggest difference is that I was using more powder. And so it's not a problem in any way, shape, or form. It's just, you know, there's some with more color and some with less. Let me go pull a lot out. It does look like I tended to lean a little bit heavier overall throughout more of the skeins uh, versus the prototype, which you can see in the lower left corner. And oh, I mean, it's not a bad thing. I think that what we created is beautiful. I am so glad that we used all of the colors. Uh, I can see them, I think I can see them all in here. The hyacinth is a little subtle compared to some of the other colors that we have, uh, but that is more of a pastel color. I'm especially glad that, oh, that we ended up both using the bright blue and the bright green in here. Uh, I think that that really pops and having you know, two similar blues, two similar purples, gives a little bit more dimension and layered. It makes the colors feel like they've blended more in the speckles than they did. And so therefore when things are layered and do blend a little bit, uh, that just gives even more dimension to our colorway. But now I'm gonna go start twisting up all of these skeins. It's probably gonna take a little while. Looking at all the skeins, I do feel some amount of consistency. Right here I have our original prototype and then this was the skein that I showed you next to it that had more pigment on it. And I think twisted it's a little harder to tell where there might be more pigment. It is slightly visible but not like super super clear. But ultimately I think this colorway is perfect. I adore it. This yarn base is so unbelievably soft. Uh, I'm going to need to buy more of it and dye it more in the future. I absolutely have loved knitting with it in the past and I like my take on it and I hope if you pre-ordered one of these skeins that you like that too. You know, one of the last times I dyed a colorway like this or with this technique for Hanukkah, I did keep things separate into dye lots. But I don't think that time when I was doing the speckling, 
I kept track of how many passes I did with each of the color, like I did today. And so that ultimately gave me more consistency once I was dyeing the yarn in bulk, something that, and the main difference that I saw between any of these was between that original prototype and what we ended up with. Uh, and I adore it. But these are circumstances where I think if you had two skeins and you were gonna use it in a project, I would blend them every couple of rows or rounds and not just mix them in later on. I would do that earlier on just in case there are some bigger differences in the total amount of pigment that would blend things together more to give you a more consistent total project. And in doing that, you don't have to do like two rounds on, two rounds off. You could do two, three, four, and mix that up as well to further with that uh, blending. But that's all up to you. We had a lot of different types of yarn mops in this video. Whether it was from our original swatching when I was finalizing the colors I wanted to use, uh, picking up some color that came underneath the pot. This has a beautiful dipped dyed appearance. And this actually, I believe, started off as a pastel from another video. And then we've got some of our more traditional yarn mops where I was wiping the dye off of my gloves onto this yarn and then heat set and repeat. But now I'm gonna go twist up all of these 20 gram minis. I could be wrong, but I think that this is some of the most variety in the Leave No Dye Behind or bonus mini skein colorways from Hanukkah that we've had this year. I really like all of them a lot. Uh, I think especially the, the swatch colorway, the way that those colors spread. I, as I'm editing this, I'm gonna have to take notes on whether or not I had vinegar in there at first or what, so that way I can try to play around with that more in the future. I think that this yarn mop colorway goes so well with the speckled ones. And if I was gonna design some kind of fade set, doing this technique on the same base would be beautiful. Now certainly you can mix and match yarn bases. Um, that's something that I've done in a project before. And actually that project included this yarn base. But color story wise, I love the way that this goes with that. I really wish that I still had a skein of this yarn so that way I could hold up and show you right now because I love it so much. I adore the way that this colorway came out and I want to dye it again. Do you think I should dye it again? I mean, do you think I should dye any of these Hanukkah colorways again? I have pretty good notes with the recipes this year and was considering doing more of them as full skeins at some point, but I mean, timing wise, it just didn't happen. And so which nights do you wish that I had full skeins available of? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I forgot, I do have something I can hold up from tonight. A bonus 20 gram mini skein. The yarn mops are so much fun. Now, as of tonight, everyone who has a Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler should have opened up all of their minis. The last few were from night nine. And if you had one from night nine, uh, which one of the three kinds of yarn mops did you get? The bonus 20 gram mini skeins were wrapped in the organza bag in case there's any confusion. Today is technically, as I'm filming this, Hanukkah day four. And last night there was a really great question in the chat. What is a yarn mop? A yarn mop is a term that I guess is kind of organically evolved in my videos that I use for a skein of yarn, which I'm going to wipe up, mop up any extra color, whether it's from dye powder on my gloved fingertips, dye on the counter, or sometimes it's to soak up color out of a pot, all of which we showed off here today. It's a great way to leave no dye behind. Now, not all Leave No Dye Behind colorways are yarn mops, but all yarn mops, unless I'm trying to do it on purpose, are typically a Leave No Dye Behind type situation. Because otherwise, a lot of that dye would get wiped up and thrown in the trash. And I mean, we create something so beautiful and it's so organic feeling because my focus is elsewhere that, I don't know, I, I love doing it and these skeins end up being some of my favorites. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my content, 
First of all, please subscribe. Please, please subscribe. This is the biggest way you can help support the channel, help it continue to grow is by engaging with these videos. But if you're looking for other ways to support the content here, I have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, that is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos. And I also have a few merch items, a few non-yarn merch items, and even some patterns that I designed a while back. But all of this is a really great way that you can help support all of the content here. Now stay tuned because tomorrow night we are going to watch the sparkle bonus colorway that I dyed this year. I'm so excited to go and edit this that I'm already a little bit sparkly uh, in preparation for the conclusions, but I do have to go finish the editing first. <laughs> But I cannot wait to hear your predictions of the technique or the colors that I will be using for tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching.